What is going on, peeps? It's Wrath here, hanging out today, playing some Monster Legends. I want to thank you guys so much for coming out with me today. If you liked the video, don't forget to smash that thumbs up button to show your support. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe as well. Alright, peeps, today we're going to be going over the top seven Earth Monsters. Now, before we jump into it, there's a couple disclaimers I would like to throw out there because, you know, what if? You gotta do it, right, peeps? So first up, all the information comes from the wiki. If any of that um, is incorrect information, blame those peeps. All right, it's on them. Two, um, there will be no VIP slash nemesis monsters in any of these lists because they are locked behind real dollar purchases, therefore not available to everyone. I'm making a top seven list available to everyone. That's what this is about. Um, also, one more thing. This is an opinion, an opinion based. Um, deal, okay? So some people may think something is wrong, some people, why is this monster not in there, why is this monster in there, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. It's an opinion-based deal, but I try to do as much research as possible to make sure that my opinions are based in at least somewhat a decent amount of facts. So, um, if you see a monster you think should have been in here, that's fine. Um, I'm not saying if a monster is not in this list, it's a bad monster. I um, realize there's only seven slots I fill. Top seven, alright? So, your monster might have been number eight on my list, okay? So it's, it's whatever. It doesn't mean they're bad monsters not on the list. It just means these are what I think are the best monsters in the Earth category. So with that being said, we're going to jump in here. There'll start be some images popping up, and we're going to start going over some Earth monsters, peeps. All right, peeps. So first up here is going to be Baba Yaga. Now this chickadee's got 3,234 power, so really low power, but she's a denial, a denial monster anyway, so power's not a big deal. Um, life, 31,667. That's a really tanky life stat for a denial monster. That's quite a bit of health. Um, her speed, 3,498. Very fast speed. She's a very, very fast monster. She's even faster than Haxter, which is crazy. She's quick. She's very quick. Uh, max gold per minute, 244. Not a super important stat, but, you know, some people wanted to know that, so there it is. Um, trait, immune to possession, like uh, any trait that makes you immune to a certain form of immobilization, be it stun, freeze, possess, whatever, I think those are always solid stats, or all solid traits, so not a bad trait. Her special skill down here, um, I guess, Izbushka, Izbushka, AoE 65 power, um, multiple enemy stun, so it's AoE stun, uh, not bad, but being in the Earth, Earth Wars, that's not the best special to have because AoE stun on Earth monsters. A lot of Earth monsters are immune to stun, so it's kind of eh, but it is a deny. It is AoE, it is special damage. So not bad, not bad. Uh, moving on over to uh, the skills, we've got Forest Kidnapper here. This is a 35 power AoE, um, Possess and Nightmares. So, obviously, this is probably her bread and butter skill, the top one you want to take, AoE Possession, right? Right, that's her best form of crowd control. Moving over, we've got Yaga's Curse, another AoE. This is 40 power. It's earth damage, not that it really matters, um, but it's um, AoE blind and removes all positive status effects from the enemy. So AoE blind is like a soft deny. That's not bad. And removing positive effects, uh, effects is always nice. It's very nice. If your enemy puts damage buffs on or something, you can blind them and wipe all that stuff out. So it's very nice. Um, moving over, we have Ancient Wisdom, a 50 power single target uh, damage may possess the target, obviously. This is a good one to have on denial. Anytime you can possess somebody, keep enemies controlled, that's important. So, moving down one more, we've got the Kid Eater. That's kind of nasty. This is a 45 power AoE. This is going to apply damage reduction to all targets and also negate healing on all targets. Now, that's kind of nice if you're facing nature monsters who have tons and tons of heals. Um, they'll just kind of kill themselves off, and that's nice. Uh, moving over, we got the Baba's Torment. This is a 55 power single enemy attack. It uh, blinds the target and removes all positive status effects. So if you did miss somebody, those curse AOE, and or if you popped that and they did a buff again after that, you can still wipe those buffs off, so that's kind of nice to have. Moving over one more time, we have the Rotten Blue Root. This is a single power, 60 damage, not bad. Um, does damage reduction target and negates healing on the target. So it's a single version of Kid Eater, pretty much. Um, up to which ones you want to take, I would recommend, obviously, the possession, the AoE possession, the AoE blind over anything else. Then the fourth one's kind of up to you. Um, now, Baba Yaga here, obviously denial monster, so how are you going to ruin her? Three straight speed. Unless you're running two denials in your PvP camp or something, um, you always run three straight speed on your denial monsters, unless you're using it as a secondary. And as a secondary denial, you can run three team speed or something. But primary denial... Three speed, peeps. So now, let's move on. 
All right, so we've got Gregors of Lyria here up next. Now, this was a really close spot between this guy and Burrow Tagore because they're both really good damage dealers, but I had to give the edge here to Gregors for a couple of reasons. We'll get to those in a second. Now, first up, we're going to go through his stats. He's got 3498 base power, which is pretty high. It's not quite 3500, but it's almost there. His life's 29,858, so not super high life stat, but he doesn't have a really squishy life stat either. It's kind of in the middle. And his speed, 3454. Pretty fast for a damage dealer, especially in the Earth category. Um, most Earth monsters are really slow. Uh, mass gold per minute, 244. His trait, immune to possession, just like Baba Yaga. Um, again, immune to a disabling skill, so that's great. Um, special skill down here, Igni. This is an AoE burn and stun with special damage. So that's definitely nice. AoE stun, again, not super effective in Earth Wars, but the burn's pretty good. <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take burn and stun, peeps. So let's jump over, check out his skills. Um, Silver Sword here is a 70 damage skill, special damage, so it's unresistible, and it puts bleeding and quicksand on the target. This is amazing. This works great in uh, premier bosses, um, adventure map bosses, even in PvP it works really well, because if they don't die from the damage, the status effects will get them. So pretty great there. Uh, moving over, we got Groundbreaker. This is the AoE quicksand. Um, 45 power, so really strong, and quicksand's a great status effect, unresisted by anybody, pretty much, in the Timarian. So that's really solid. Moving on down, we've got Bear Rage, which is an AoE bleed, 40 power, and it's special damage, so it's unresistable. That's kind of your backup. If you're fighting Earth Monsters, you use Bear Rage instead. Works pretty well. Moving over, we've got Cleaning Potion. This is a 55 power single target. It makes him immune to stun and removes all negative status effects from himself. That's pretty solid. That's pretty solid. Especially in Earth Wars, making himself immune to stun is pretty great. Uh, moving on one more time, we've got Bear School. This is a self-buff for 50% damage if you really want to take it. Kind of up to you there. So this guy, obviously a damage dealer. Now, why did I give him the edge over Buru Tagore? Um, the main reason is Buru Tagore doesn't have any AoE damage. He has like zero AoE damage. It's kind of bad in my opinion. I think AoE is very strong and not having it is a weakness. Brewer Tagore is not bad, I'm not saying that at all. He's a very good damage dealer with very high single target damage and even skills that give him extra turns. So he's not bad at all, but I had to give this edge to Gregors here because of the AoE. Now as a damage dealer, you can ruin him a couple of different ways. You can either run um, two speed or two team speed and a strength if you're kind of wanting to give your denial monster a little extra, you know, oomph with your team speeds there. You can also give him the two strength and one speed or one team speed for a little extra damage and if you're uh really like running hard like with the demise or something you can run three strength on him and that works just fine up to you however you want to run him it's your guy all right so moving on here we're going to general autumn now this guy was a very 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 close tie with bastet they have very similar skill sets they do a lot of the same things but i had to give the edge here general autumn because he's just so freaking versatile he can be used in so many different ways so he took that spot from her still they're both good monsters now he's got 3454 base damage which isn't bad at all he has 31,969 life, which is pretty tanky. It's not super tanky, but it's not bad at all. His speed is 3,399, so not super fast, but for an Earth monster, it's not bad. Um, his max gold per minute, 305. That's amazing. He has the General's trait, which is amazing. Tough, 35% uh, resistant to status effects. That's always good. Special skill is very lackluster, in my opinion. Um, final assaults, 85 Earth damage, 85 power Earth damage to a single target. Pretty meh in my opinion, but whatever. Not horrible, I guess. It's useful in some places. Jumping over to his skills, we've got Armored Troops. This is probably what he's most known for, is his gigantic double life shield that he gives to everybody. Pretty amazing skill, pretty great support. Makes you almost immune to damage for at least one turn. Um, so that's always good. Moving over, we have Hard as a Rock. This is kind of his tank skill. If you want to run him as a tank build, you can take this. It doubles his life and he returns all damage back to the attackers. Um, now, unfortunately, there's no taunt on this, so it's not super duper duper effective as a tank, but it can be used as a tank. Uh, moving over one more time, we have the Earth Offensive. This is an AoE stun, really low damage, but it's a denial move. If you want to run him as denial build, obviously this is one you want to take. I would probably take this on any build just because an AoE stun is always good. That's just a, you know, that's my opinion. Uh, moving down, we've got Autumn's Mace. This is a 60 power, zero cooldown special damage. Absolutely amazing for a damage dealing role. Um, great in any role, really. It's no cooldown and special damage. Can't go wrong there, peeps. Alright, moving on over one more time. We've got the Earth Army Assault. This is a 45 power AoE damage. If you're running a damage dealing build, this is probably a must have. Um, 45 power, it's pretty solid. Moving over one more time, we have the Powerful Mace. This is a 45 power special damage, one cooldown, stun. 
Now, if you're running Denial Build, obviously the extra stun is always what you will take because stuns are always good. Now, ruining this guy, honestly, I don't even know how to tell you because he can be run so many different ways. Um, if you want to run him as a support base monster, you can run three team speed, two team speed, a team life, um, damage dealer, strengths and team speeds, whatever you want to run. He's just got so many different uses. It's up to you. Whatever you're going to run him as, just kind of ruin him according to that. So that's my best advice for you there because he can be run in so many different ways. All right, so next up here, we have the warrior. Now, what makes the warrior good? Actually, quite a few things, but um, let's jump into his stats first, like always. 3,476 power, so he makes a solid damage dealer if you want him to be that. Um, life, 30,763. Not bad either, pretty tanky. He can take a punch, peeps. And his speed's 3,388, so a little bit slower than General Autumn. Um, not the fastest monster in the game, obviously, but he's still pretty unique, and I like him. A uh, mass gold per minute, 244. Trait, immune to stun. Not super uncommon for an earth monster, but it's immunity to a uh, disabling move, so not bad. His special skill down here, the hunt. This is an AoE damage that gives your allies damage boost and precision while making the enemies bleed. So a really solid special in my opinion because damage boost and precision, it's a, it's a supporting role. It gives you guys a buff. I think that's cool. Uh, moving over to his skills, um, he's pretty. He's got a pretty diverse skill set and it's kind of nice. Uh, moving over, we've got Titanic Axe here. This is a single enemy stun, 50 power, special damage, unresistible. Um, stuns are always great to have. Being able to stun monsters is awesome. Moving over, Brutal Javelins. This is an AoE 45 damage, so it's a decent damage dealing skill, but it also destroys all the enemy shields. Now this is a great counter to General Autumn, because you can immediately nullify his double life shields in a single move. That's pretty powerful, and it's not bad at all. I think it's a really good skill. Uh, moving over one more time, we've got the Enchanted Axe. This is a 65 power skill, but it's got a 50% chance to bleed, blind, and stun the target. That's pretty crazy. I mean, landing just one of those is nice, but if you land all three, that's a really solid skill right there. Pretty solid, peeps. All right, now moving on down, we have the Hard Shield. This is a very cool skill. It gives a 50% shield to your target and also gives them double damage. So not only is it making them hit really hard, it also gives them a humongous amount of survivability to live to actually get to use that damage. So I think that's pretty cool. Moving on over, we have Unbreakable Shields. This is a 40% shield to all your allies and also gives them all a damage boost. So another supporting skill that not only is a shield, it's also a damage boost, which makes him unique among Earth Monsters. A lot of them give shields, but none of them give damage boosts with it. So very solid setup there. I like that. And then moving over one more time, we have Sharp Spears, which is an AoE 35 power bleed. Now, it's not amazing, but if you're running a damage dealing build, obviously an AoE bleed is not a bad thing to have. Um, so the reason I like this guy is he can be run in a couple of different ways. You can run him as straight damage. Um, that works just fine. You know, two team speed, two speed, a strength, or two strength, one team speed, whatever you want to run there. Or you can run him just as effectively as a support base monster, dropping shields with damage to your teammates, um, the hard shield with double damage and a shield to your teammates. Um, very interesting skill set he has. So up to you how you want to run him. Um, if you're running him as support, I would probably recommend speed and or, or, not three speed, three team speed or one speed and two team speed to give him a little extra oomph in his speed to go before your damage dealer does. All right, guys, next up here is going to be Lou Caliber. I don't know, it could be Louis Calibre, whatever, whatever. I don't know how to say his name perfect, but whatever. Lou Caliber here. He's got 3,421 power, so he makes a solid damage deal if you want him to be. His life, 31,366, so pretty tanky, which is good for if you want to run him tank-wise. And his speed's not super fast, 3,377. So, again, for an Earth monster, not crazy fast. For every other monster, pretty decently slow. But whatevs. Max gold per minute here can be 244. His trait is immune to freeze. Again, immune to a disabling effect. That's always nice. His special skill is actually pretty special. <laughs> this is my real voice. It's a single enemy with 80 damage, but that's not what's important, what's important about it. It gives him a 50% shield, but it also gives him mirror mirror for three turns. Um, a three turn mirror mirror is pretty powerful. It means you're reflecting damage back constantly. You're literally killing the enemy with your with their own skills. It's pretty powerful. Um, so moving over, we're going to check out his skills. He has Grand Shield Auto. This is a self buff, um, which makes possession almost useless against him. Um, it's a 50% shield. He receives all single target attacks, and he reflects them all back. So it gives him Mirror Mirror, a shield, and a taunt. 
Very powerful all-in-one tanking skill there, which makes him amazing in my opinion. That's why he's in this list. Um, moving over, we have High Pitch Voice. This is a 60 power single enemy earth damage skill, but it's got no cooldown, which is always nice to have a zero cooldown skill. It helps you uh, keep from getting stuck in like cooldown loops. This guy doesn't have that problem, but some monsters do. Anyway, moving on down, we have the I Got This. This is a 75 power single target skill, so again, pretty heavy damage there. Um, that's great. Really heavy damage. Can't go wrong with heavy damage like that. 75 power. Wow. Uh, moving over, we have Get Off Me Punk. It's a weaker version of Grand Shield Auto, but it's nice to have. It gains him a 50% shield, and it gives him Mirror Mirror. Doesn't give him the taunt this time, but still any AoE attack that hits him, he's going to reflect it back. Not bad. Uh, moving over one more time, we have the Squeaker Squad. This is a 45 power with a stun. Um, not amazing, but a stun, so it's never bad. Um, ruining this guy. Kind of interesting. I would recommend not using speed on him personally, because Mirror Mirror is only, if, unless you get the special, it's only a one-turn skill. So the faster he goes again, the faster he gets rid of his Reflect Damage ability. Up to you. Um, I would recommend Life and Strength runes, some combination of that. If you really want to, maybe a Team Speed rune to help buff your, your own monsters. Um, if you really wanted to, even two Team Speed and a Strength would work on this guy, because he does work pretty effectively as a damage dealer, it just gives him less health. You gotta kind of rely on the shields to keep him alive. Up to you how you want to run him. Um, I think he's really good all around, but that is Lou Caliber Papes. All right, guys. So next up on the list is gonna be Brontes. Now, some people may be like, "Well, his stats are pretty low. Why is Brontes on the list?" Because I said so. <laughs> Again, it's opinion based. I still think he's very useful for a couple of reasons, and we'll get into that. So first up, his power three thousand two hundred and twenty-three. So not really great power. Eh, his life, 31,969, so pretty decently tanky life, and his speed's 3,300, so he's not super fast either, so people will be like, eh, why is this guy here? Well, we'll get to it, peeps, be patient. Uh, his mass gold per minute, 244, and his trait is immune to stun, not out of the ordinary for an earth monster. His special skill down here, Argy's Wrath, Argy's Wrath, I don't know, whatever, AoE, 45 power, and it says that here, may stun all targets. It's not a stun, it's a mega stun. There's a difference. Mega stun is not blocked by immunity to stun, and it's a two-turn stun, which makes him very effective in Earth Wars, because he's immune to stun, which every other Earth Denial has stun except for Baba Yaga, and then he can drop this sucker if he gets a special and mega stun everyone for two rounds, which is pretty much game over for you. Um, amazing special there, great for Earth Wars. Moving over, we have Area Rock Slide. This is his bread and butter AoE regular stun um, for his regular skills. Works just fine, works like any other stun does. Uh, moving over, we have Mega Rock Slide. This is a single attack, but it is a mega stun. It's a single target mega stun, so it's a great way to uh, uh, immobilize one of the enemy's immobilizer monsters um, for two turns. Really solid skill Mega Rock Slide is. All right, moving over, we have Barbarous Mace. Heavy special damage, May Days the target. So Days are always nice. It's not super great, probably better if it was blind, but it's Days. It's a little bit of damage. It's not bad. Moving down, we have Angular Mace. This, oh, farts. All right, never mind. This is just a zero cooldown version of Barbarous Mace, pretty much. Does a little less damage, 45 power, but no cooldown, it's still a daze. Not bad, up to you if you want to take that or not, your choice. Uh, moving over, we have the Ancient Shield Earthquake. This is a single target attack, doesn't do a whole bunch of damage, but it gives him a 50% shield. Now, it's got a four-turn cooldown, which is a long time, so um, I put this one up here as well, the Earthquake Barrier. Um, it's a 40 power skill, but it gives him a 30% shield, and it's only a two-turn cooldown. So, if you want the lower cooldown, go with Earthquake Barrier. If you want the higher shield, obviously go Ancient. Okay, up to you. You can run this guy a couple of different ways. I think his main primary role is um, Denial um, with 3 speed. You could also run him with 3 team speed and kind of use him as a backup Denial on an Earth team. Um, to get the mega stun off and stuff like that. Totally up to you. Uh, I wouldn't run him as a damage dealer personally, due to the fact he has really low base power, but that's just me. That's uh, just me. Um, that's how I would do Bronte's peeps. All right, so the last guy here needs no introduction. Everybody knows him. The great and mighty Oros. This guy's got 3498 power. Not a really big deal. He's not much of a damage dealer. Um, his life, 40,112, so really high life stat. He's obviously a tank. You guys know about him. Um, speed, 2,772. Very, 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 very slow. He's he's a mountain. What do you expect? Anyways, max gold per minute, 305, so really good max gold. Um, trait, the mountain. An amazing trait. Everybody likes the mountain trait. Immunity to stun and freeze. Can't go wrong with that. Um, his special skill down here is what makes him an amazing defender, and a lot of people like to rely on him for it, is Global Stomp. This is an AoE attack that has a chance to instantly kill monsters. So even if he has no strength on him at all, you can still potentially 
kill an entire enemy team in a single move. So pretty powerful for PvP defense. You see a lot of them in PvP defenses just for that reason. But, you know, what ifs? Oros, pretty solid guy. Moving over to his skills, we have, I don't even know how to say most of these names, Choi Uyo, I guess. Um, this returns 100% incoming damage to the enemy. It's a reflect damage skill, obviously. Not bad. Moving over, we have Everest. This is going to be his, his tanky skill. It doubles his life, and it gives him protection, so every single target attack goes to Oros, and then he can reflect that damage back to enemies. Moving down, we've got Mana Slu, I guess. Um, this is moderate damage with life regeneration. Amazing for a tank, life regeneration. He's going to have a lot of life on him anyway. This is going to be a humongous amount of healing. All right. Moving over, we have Dahula Galur. I don't even know. Starts with a D. It's a 55 power single enemy earth damage. It's probably what I would take for my fourth skill. But some people... Some people choose to take Lahostsi or whatever. Lotsi? I don't know. It's a 45 power single target and it gives him a 30% life shield. The main reason I would recommend you do not take Lotsi or whatever it's called, is because Reflect Damage only works when Oros takes damage. If you damage Oros' shield, he will not reflect damage. So that's why I wouldn't take that personally. Um, if you want to take it, it's up to you, but I don't think that's one of his best skills. Now, obviously, Oros is a tank monster, so a lot of people run three straight life on him. Um, you can run two life and a team life, um, two life and a team speed or something. Whatever you really want to run on him is up to you. He's a tank, peeps. He's a tank. Alright, peeps. So, those were the top seven Earth monsters, in my opinion. Obviously, new monsters come out all the time, so this may get outdated, you know, in a few months or whatever. And I'll have to make a new one or something. But, that for now is the top seven Earth monsters. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos, don't forget to leave those down there, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you liked the video, please make sure you smash that thumbs up button and show your support. And I will see you guys next time.